la 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 la
partner. You tell me about how you grew up here, Monday? Yeah, Mom and Dad, uh, were, uh, they met in the Vietnam War, they met in the uh, uh, Army uh, testing facility, and uh, been together ever since, still together, uh, moved out to Los Angeles, and uh, they lived uh, here currently. How did you describe your childhood? Childhood was amazing. I was not, um, I was educated, anything education in sports was funded, everything else was earned and very well dished out. I, I would say I could not blame any of my sexual predilections or any of my issues whatsoever on my parents. I, they, they loved each other, they never fought, they, um, they, they kissed, they cuddled, they discussed things like adults. There was never any violence in the family. Um, it was, it was wonderful. Did something else happen to you outside the time? Did you get Yes, that did happen. Um, when I was, so I have two virginity dates, or lots of virginity dates, because, um, I thought it was at 16 when I had, was with my then girlfriend from high school. Um, however, uh, after some therapy, I realized that, um, I had suppressed memory that when I was 16 living in a summer camp, I was at the first party of the summer, and the first time I had really been drunk, I had about 12 warm rocks and over the course of eight hours, and things stuff for the first time. It was all fun. And then, um, the next thing I know, the girls showed up, and uh, a lot of them looked really with me, and I was just having a lot of fun, and one of the older counselors, one of the senior counselors, a female, she's 23, she led me up into the upstairs bedroom, and she basically threw me on the floor, and just started making out with me and then pulled my clothes off and I had no idea what to think. She was kind of what everyone in the camp called a butterface and um, she had a great body but um, wasn't, wasn't the most useful in the world but not the most ugly either and apparently I was aroused by it because when she pulled my pants off my penis was quite erect and so she started talking very dirty and went down on me and then the next thing I know she just gets up on her feet and start squatting and she's just putting me inside her and driving me and then as if that weren't enough then all of a sudden the, the girl that I had a crush on that was more my age appropriate uh, came into the room to watch and sat in the corner and was pleasuring herself while that went down. So, uh, yeah, the interesting thing though was after processing it and asking a friend about it at the time who had a big recollection he said initially you were quite like proud of it and you didn't really give me details and then I guess because I was so drunk and like whatever I totally forgot about it, suppressed it and then my therapist brought it out, she was really good and the fourth she had to be this extremely smoking hot, very smart Asian dress like in a sexy skirt and she was constantly sucking on candy the whole time which was driving me crazy because it was very oral fixation kind of thing and and yeah, and I was just, all I did was transfer to it, even just wanted to think about sending it over to the So, anyway, she uh, said to me, she said, well, David, you can't come to that much of a talk to you. I mean, it's not like you're going to be satisfied with monogamous missionary once a week sex for the rest of your life. So, I thought that was pretty telling about my sexual past and history and where I went from there and how it got started and everything like that and where I'm at today. So, and where, where, where do you think this led to your sexual appetite and desires? To all sorts of kinks and fetishes or taboos or whatever you would call that are within the frame of the law and do not include BDSM and pain um, or auto foods that are not naturally occurring during sex. <laughs> um, I, uh, would you like, like, the scattering of some of the things that you Well, uh, for instance, uh, in college, uh, later in college, for the end, uh, a friend of mine told me, admittedly, that he had been working as a, as a high-end, uh, escort on the side for, um, for a madam who was based out of Beverly Hills. A lot of, um, a lot of, uh, divorced milks and, uh, widows and things like that. And when you get to five, Johnny works with five hammers, five hammers, five hammers. Johnny works with five hammers. Then he takes a rest. <laughs>
Thank you.